I'm Yao Wu, Curator of Asian Art at the Smith College Museum of Art. I'm very happy to be joined by Zheng Bo, an eco-conceptualist artist based in Hong Kong, who also teaches at the School of Creative Media at the City University of Hong Kong. Zheng Bo was a leader in residence at the Lewis Global Studies Center this semester, and his uh, residency was originally scheduled for early April, but we had to postpone his visit to Smith due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'm very happy here to have him virtually with us and to speak with us about his art and practice. So welcome, Bo, first. Um, yeah, nice I to see you. Like, yeah, I would like to um, talk a little bit about the connections you see between the artistic and political messages expressed in your art and uh, this current global crisis we're experiencing. So first of all, you are um, obviously very fascinated with plants and um, particularly wheat. How did this fascination come about? Um, and what do you think of human interactions with other species? Um, and has this pandemic further um, prompted you to consider uh, our relationship with invisible organisms uh, such as bacteria and viruses? So it's really nice to talk to you online. Um, um, you, you, you may know I was actually um, an undergraduate student at Amherst College um, 20 some years ago. When I was there, I um, majored in fine arts and I was fascinated by portrait paintings. So I, my graduate um, project was um, a series of portrait paint, uh, port, uh, portraits. Since uh, I left college, I was, uh, I, for a long time, I was fascinated by human activities. Um, I spent almost 10 years working on social engaged projects. Uh, collaborating with communities. But something happened um, about seven years ago. I moved from northern China to southern China. So my own living environment uh, changed. And um, I was teaching in a city called Hangzhou. Um, and I noticed there are beautiful trees in front of the art school. And I was invited to create a project in the same year in Shanghai. Um, Shanghai is a, a huge city, but when I was invited to um, create a work in this particular location, I saw a beautiful patch of weeds in the center of the city because the city was transforming itself by moving factories out of the city, like, um, like many major cities uh, now around the world. Um, industrial factories are pushed out of the cities. Um, cultural institutions occupy those sites. It was that situation in 2013. Um, the uh, Shanghai cement factory was pushed out of the city and then the government was transforming that site into a cultural area. Um, there's a gap in between and because human activities stopped for three years. Weeds grew. Um, it was beautiful. It was very vibrant. And I was really taken um, by surprise. And I think that really, that, that uh, experience uh, shocked me uh, into seeing, even in cities, we could have a multi-species uh, situation if we just let things grow. Um, so that really um, changed my art practice from human-centric or anthropocentric to um, focusing on multi-species relations, in particular with weeds. Um, I also worked with um, other kinds of plants, but mainly with weeds. Yeah, um, I know that you've made a number of um, eco-queer um, films, um, and this idea of botanical sexuality is a very interesting one. Um, can you elaborate on that? Um, you know, how may this idea challenge our, um, you know, anthropocentric views, for example? I'm fascinated by human bodies. I think as an artist, I, you know, like I said, I, I did portraits. Um, you know, when I also, I, when, I, when I was a student, I also spent a semester in Spain. Um, and I travel around uh, Europe to see 
uh, great art pieces. Um, I think as, as artists, we have always been fascinated by um, bodies. Um, I also did some performance pieces um, when I was working with communities. But I, when, I, when I started to work with plants, for a while, I was doing mainly installations, um, creating live pieces with plants. But then I, I felt that there, there is some need for intimacy. Um, you know, of course, when we plant, um, we, we are there with plants. Um, but I think that relationship can be brought even closer. So I, you know, I, I remember uh, a friend of mine actually said the best way to know someone is through a um, um, very intimate encounter. So I thought, why not create a situation where I can become even uh, intimate with plants? So the idea is to, to make um, a sexual um, uh, situation. Of course, it's, I mean, uh, w when I first had this idea to make the film in 2016, it was very difficult for me to explain, right? Because no one has seen something like this. Um, so it really took me some time to convince people to help uh, cr to realize this project. But once we, once we created the first short film, now it's much easier for people to visualize the situation where uh, men uh, in my film um, men and ferns in Taiwan get entangled um, in a forest. Um, you know, the, the situation is, I, I, for me, you know, it's no longer ridiculous at all, right? For me, it's very natural. And I think for a lot of people who participate in this project, they also, once they get to the forest, once they uh, really see the, um, the magnificent plants, it's, it's actually easy to, to, to kind of fall in love, to, to have the desire to become close to plants. Yeah, I also noticed that um, your art uh, often references historical records and events. Um, as a contemporary artist and also as a um, art professor, um, what do you think of the place of uh, history and earlier human wisdom in um, contemporary art or maybe by extension in contemporary life in general? I think we are living in a very particular moment. Um, this, I, I think in, in, in my case, you know, I, I was born in 1974, in these um, 40 some years, um, China and also to some extent the world has changed so dramatically. Right? So I think we're encountering so many uh, situations where we have very limited time to think. Um, I think looking back into human history, and I think increasingly now in, uh, in my practice, I'm also looking into um, earth history right? to, to allow us a longer time frame to perhaps um, think about our situation with more clarity. Uh, when I, you know, I, 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 I want to say, um, you know, I sometimes I feel in terms of human history, even though we have been around for um, a couple million years and our written history has a few thousand years, it's still a very short moment uh, in terms of Earth history, right? So I think now I'm uh, not only looking into human history, but I'm increasingly um, uh, spending time to learn about Earth history. Um, but it's still in, a, I think it's still in process because I think given the very limited uh, um, time a human can live on this planet, um, you know, I, I think it, it's such a short moment um, of our life. Um, we, you know, we, even if we try very hard, it, it still takes, um, I think it, it, it's very difficult for us to really comprehend the long history of this planet. Yeah, um, so I want to bring back, um, you know, this topic of our current pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, one irony that I see in this current moment is that, mm -hmm. you know, the virus um, has taken away many precious lives, but it actually really sees no um, geopolitical boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. But on the other hand, how um, uh, humankind, you know, copes with this pandemic 
only actually reinforces this very artificial and arbitrary boundaries, right? As we see many countries, nations um, turn very inward to manage this pandemic. Um, so in your art, um, you have uh, for a long time advocated for the dismantling um, of um, boundaries between nation states, but even more importantly, you know, between human and non-human species. So can you speak to this aspect of your thinking and practice and maybe relate it to you know, what experiencing, we are experiencing now? I think what, I, what I've seen here in this part of the world and also you know, to the extent that I can understand through reading news online, um, the pandemic has been kind of characterized as a health situation. Um, I think in, based on my experience for the, uh, you know, uh, working as an artist, but also uh, teaching and learning about ecological issues, I, I think it, it's what we are experiencing is a crisis of species relations. Right? So where we have this disruption of um, a transformed relationship between the human species and this particular virus species, but also there's intermediate, uh, intermediate race, intermediate species in between. So it's really, I, I, I think like perhaps uh, now more people, this pandemic is part of the um, larger ecological emergency that we are experiencing. Um, actually for a while, I think this pandemic is just more acute and more immediate for many of us. And I think if we really see it as a species relations situation, then you know there's no reason not to really uh, think about the planetary situation rather than nation state situation, right? So how can you, how can we as a species um, um, sort of readjust our relationship with another species if we only focus on nation state issues? That that to me is really ridiculous. Um, I think. Um, because I worked with weeds, I, like I said, you know, there's a lot of discussion on invasive species, but also that term is um, uh, is determined by um, borders that we have uh, we have artificially erected. Uh, for other species, they don't really follow our na uh, uh, nation state ideas, and I think that for me, I think it's really important now particularly during this pandemic, hopefully many of us can really see that uh, the situation as a planetary situation rather than a nation state situation. Um, yeah, I just want to say a bit more. I mean, um, there is a lot of discussion on globalization because of this pandemic. Um, I think it's really the moment for us to think about if we don't, if we, you know, if we don't want uh, globalization in the uh, economic sense, do we do we retrieve into sort of a nationalist sentiment, or do we find another way to to imagine the planetary situation um, rather than retreating into our national borders? Okay. Um, as you um, discussed earlier, that um, socially engaged art has always been a um, major focus of your um, teaching, but also practice. Um, what has motivated you um, and um, how does art contribute to um, social discourses or um, effect um, social change? Um, I, like I said, I grew up in the 1970s, you know, I, I was born in the 1970s. Um, I, and I, I, you know, I, I grew up kind of in the 1980s uh, in Beijing. Um, it's, it's a very socialist experience as, a uh, as I experienced as a child. Um, the sense of equality was still very much present um, uh, in, in the social life in China. Um, you know, I didn't have a, any understanding of money actually until um, I went to the United States. And I think there's a lot of problems with historical socialist experiments, but I think as an idea, um, socialism really for me is quite an um, uh, honorable uh, aspiration, you know, building equality among us 
Um, but now, of course, I think I'm also, in my practice, I'm also thinking about equality, not only among humans, but also among different species. Um, so um, going back to your question of social, socially engaged art, I think because of my sort of socialist early experience, I always think artists, um, it's our role to, to contribute to, um, to a better world. Um, so we, we, I don't think it's enough to just create beautiful pieces. I think it's, um, it's our role to address um, social issues through artistic um, means. Uh, I think it's, you know, I, I, don't, I don't pit myself uh, against activists. I think it's very important to think about how we can actually collaborate with activists, collaborate with social movements to uh, really um, bring our artistic skills into social situations uh, to really contribute to a social movement. I'm less um, working solely in social engaged art now, but I bring a lot of the techniques I have accumulated into the ecological practice, into ecological art projects. So I often create workshops. Um, I often want to collaborate with other people, uh, either community members or um, um, uh, ecologists, uh, landscape designers, scientists, etc. Because I, I see art not as something created by a single artist. It's, re it's always a collaborative situation. Um, it's always part of a larger movement. So I very much want to embed my project in the larger issue and in, in the movement. Um, first, um, through your education and then through your work as an artist, um, you have lived and practiced um, all over the world. Um, how do you see um, differences in culture um, impacting um, your own practice um, and also, also the reception uh, of your art and practice? I think in both socially engaged art and also in ecological art practice, um, because I'm mainly working now um, in Asia, uh, there, there's a cultural difference. I think the idea of activism takes different form in this part of the world. Um, so we often don't have a lot, we, we don't have a long tradition of uh, human rights or animal rights. So the idea of rights is somewhat not so familiar uh, uh, in this part of the world. Um, so I think in, in US and Europe, uh, a lot of artists work with the idea of rights and uh, work directly in activist forms. I think in this part of the world, world uh, I think it's very productive to think about pedagogical situations, to focus on teaching and learning because there's a strong desire for, um, for both artists and audience to learn things. So often social engagement uh, is framed as a teaching and learning situation. And I also think there's a strong tradition to um, focus on practice um, in terms of either daily practice or ritualized practice. And also as um, 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 cultivation and self-cultivation. Um, so it's very important to change the way we live and change the way the world works. So it's not only to focusing externally, but also internally as each person, as an artist or as a participant, how do we really change the way we see the world and how do we change our daily routines? Um, so that's the cultural difference I see. Um, yeah, so finally, um, we hope that you will make your visit to Smith soon, either in the fall or in the spring semester next year. Um, if you do come, um, what are some um, permanent outcomes you would hope to see in our institution as a result of um, the work you share with us, the workshop you know, that you would lead here? Um, how would you ideally like our attitudes towards nature um, be changed by um, your uh, presence on campus? First, I want to say, like I said, um, I really see 
uh, my role as contributing to a movement. Right? So I want to embed my time at Smith in a larger movement. I think there's a lot of momentum in the US um, based on what I read um, to think about um, ecological emergency and more specifically on the Green New Deal. So I want to position uh, my project within that larger context. Uh, I also see that Smith is thinking about its campus, um, the, the master plan of the campus. So I hope the, uh, my presence there, the workshops, the talks, will somehow contribute to that uh, discussion. Uh, I think perhaps as an artist, my role is really to, to push for a more radical imagination of these issues, right? For example, you know, in the larger issue of uh, the, the, the social picture, but also specifically under the campus um, plan, how can we really see the campus as a multi-species uh, space rather than uh, anthropocentric space? How can we really bring, uh, how, how can we really connect ecological issues and political issues, uh, even in thinking about the campus? So the title of the workshop I have proposed is to, um, to imagine uh, eco-socialist garden, right? to, to perhaps imagine the campus as an uh, ecological situation with multi-species, um, uh, vibrancy, but also with socialist ideas. Of course, it's an expanded socialist idea. Uh, it's an eco-socialist idea. So I hope that's, that can uh, create some lingering um, discussion. So I don't think, you know, because even, you know, I try to stay there as long as I can, but still it's a very limited amount of time. So the idea is to collaborate with faculty um, to hopefully plant some seeds and then these ideas will grow and um, be realized, not by myself, but by the community. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to um, speak with us. Um, we hope to welcome you to campus, um, you know, before uh, long. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, wish you uh, stay safe and healthy in Hong Kong um, and um, enjoy nature as you can as well. Thank you. Yeah, I've been walking every day to, uh, to see plants and to draw plants. Okay. Yeah, I hope to okay. see you soon. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.